you serve. Amen. 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 I want to go oh, where Jesus is.
so much stuff, bad stuff going on, but mm. we, have, we have someone to go to, which is God, which is Jesus. Amen. And I just thank God for keeping me and my family in prayer and, and keeping me and my family and everyone who's connecting me strong in God and His Word because we need His Word. And wherever me and my family's going through, you know, I know that like, God's going to take us out and, you know, raise the just and the unjust. And when God's rain comes down, that's where His blessing comes down. So I just want to. Amen. 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 Anybody else? God bless you, sir. But everything that has for us, praise the Lord, praise be the Lord. I'm thankful for another day, mm. even though things are not always the best. Mm. I'm still grateful mm. to Amen. be able to yes. see another day. Amen. Talking preacher, I heard an old song. I ain't gonna sing it, but just another day, as the Lord has kept me. Yes. Amen, amen. He's kept me from all evil. Amen. When the mind stayed on Jesus, and just another day, I'm I'm grateful. I, I pick it back. Uh, um, Sister Allen, um, I, I just I'm, I'm grateful to know when you 
when you look at life and you look at uh, where you are um, and you think about where sometimes the enemy will play with us and make us think we should be somewhere else and feel bad about maybe where you're at. Uh, but it's a blessing to know that even when things aren't good, God is still good. Yes. Amen. And even when it's raining outside, God is still good. Amen. And I'm grateful tonight, amen, because it rained all day long and I didn't have to sit outside in the rain. Amen. I'm grateful amen. that I've got a mind, amen, to do right, want to do right anyways. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful, amen, to the Lord that I know that God is a keeper, that God is a restorer, that God is able to make all things well. And even the things in our lives that aren't well, I declare that God is able to make it well. Amen? Amen. I heard a preacher last night say something, and this blessed me. I've been thinking about this all day. He says, he says, we've been saying for a long time that when praises go up, blessings come down. That's not scripture. It's not scripture. He says, when praises go up, the blesser comes down. I'm going to tell you what's so amazing about that. Sister Harry, you know what I think about? I'm glad about that for I'm glad that when I praise God, he comes to me. Yeah. 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 And the blessing is that whatever I need, he'll bring it with him. Amen. Yeah. The Bible declares that the Lord is coming quickly and his reward is in his hand. Yeah. And so I don't know about you, but that makes me want to praise God even the more because I realize that as I'm praising him, he's coming to my rescue. Yeah. And I'm grateful tonight for that. Amen. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil because the Lord is with us. What a blessing that is, isn't it? That even though we're walking through difficult times, God, hallelujah, is with us. And he's given us everything we need. The same scripture says, he, he lays us, he allows us to go, he leads us besides the still waters. And thank God that in life, uh, sometimes everything seems to be moving so fast, but thank God for the comfort that God can provide. Amen? I want to go with you. Why don't you go with me tonight to the book of Jude. We honor the Lord for each of you, to our preachers, to our deacons, to our, sister, uh, to our church mothers, and all of you, my brothers and sisters who are here. Uh, we are grateful to the Lord for you and thankful to those who may be watching us online and thankful for the mighty God that we serve. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Amen. 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 Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Sanctified Church Song says, He's there when I need Him. I can stand upon His word. That's the kind of God that I serve. And I'm so grateful tonight. That's the God that I serve. Whatever I need, he will provide. Amen. And I'm grateful. Jude, Jude, the book of Jude, uh, is at the end of the Bible. Uh, it is only one chapter in Jude. If you get the Revelation, you've gone just a little bit too far. If you just turn around, uh, make a quick U-turn. Don't go back too far now. Uh, take the first exit. When you make the U-turn, take the first exit. And you'll get to Jude. Now we get Jude. Interestingly, interestingly, Deacon, uh, Deacon Allen, uh, Jude does not have a lot of chapters. Jude, as a matter of fact, only has one. And so I want to talk about these last few verses. I want to, before we read tonight, I want to ask you this. Now this is a very serious question. Very serious question. What is your expectation? What is your expectation? Think about this for a minute. When our family members are sick um, and they go to the hospital, we're usually okay, right? At first, we're a little worried, maybe. We're a little concerned. Um, but then when they come in and say we're going to transfer them to hospice, um, then we, we, our, our mind shifts a little bit. Come on, y'all say that to me. It's one thing to be a hospital visit, right? But it's another thing we talk about a hospice visit. Yeah, because, uh, because most of us aren't used to people going into hospice and coming out. Now, they do do it. Amen. Amen. It, it happens. Amen. Um, but, but that's not usually what we think of, right? What is our expectation? What is our expectation when we look on the television and the weatherman says it's a 90% chance of rain? What is your expectation? You expect it to do what? Rain. Yeah, yeah. What is our expectation when we look on the news and look at the weather and it says it's going to be 102 degrees? We expect it to be what? Hot. Right? What is our expectation? What is our expectation when we come to church? Hopefully you expect to hear the word of God. Amen. Right? Yeah. But I believe, I believe, I believe, and maybe I'm wrong. I believe that there are many folk who do not have correct expectations. Not of church. Not even of the web or anything like that. But correct expectations of who God is. Let me help somebody tonight. Let me help somebody tonight. Things are going to happen in our life. 
And everything that happens is not going to be good. But as believers, we should have the expectation that good is going to come from this. Come on, somebody say amen tonight. That regardless of what I face, regardless of what I see, regardless of what happens, <coughs> my expectation is that good will come from this. Why is my expectation good will come from this? Because my expectation is not in things. Sister John said it. She said, some trust in horses. And some trust in chariots. But we will trust what? In the name of the Lord. And so my expectation of God is this. My expectation is God is going to do just what he said he would do. My expectation is God is going to come through for me. Is that your expectation? Amen. My expectation is, I don't know how, but I believe that God is going to do it. Amen. I believe God is going to give me the victory, and he's going to get the glory. Amen. My expectation of God is based on his word. Look at this real quick. I love this. I think it's amazing. Look at Jude. Look at Jude. Look at, look at 24. Now, Unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Y'all should have been happy right there. Amen. And to present you faultless yes. before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Watch this. Here's my expectation. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And you ought to seal it with, amen. amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jude. Jude starts this by telling the church that there are things that are going to creep in. There are things that are going to come in and it's going to try to disrupt the church. Y'all should say amen to me tonight. Amen. Yeah. It says, it says, there are going to be things that are going to come in and these things that come in, hallelujah, don't come by themselves. Amen. Yeah. Because when fear comes in, trouble comes in. Y'all say it better than nothing. Yeah. yeah. When, 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 when strife comes in, envy comes in. Yeah. When worry comes in, doubt comes in. Yeah. yeah. And what happens is this, this seemingly beautiful garden. I was looking the other day. Anybody? I told y'all I like, I like, I like that TikTok. I do. I like all that. And there's this lady, Sister Allen. I thought about you. The lady don't look like you. I promise you. I don't know why, but I immediately thought of you. Her name is Mama Goo. Yeah, Mama Goo. Mama Goo is a gardener. Right? Yeah, I don't know why I thought about you. Older lady, I promise you she don't look like you, don't act like nothing at all. But, but her name is Mama Goo. You ever seen her? And Mama Goo has this beautiful raised garden. Sister Harold don't talk about it. And she has these beautiful colored greens. I mean, let me tell y'all something. Listen, Mary Bella, Sister Mary Bella, I ain't, I ain't seen no colored greens as beautiful as these. They big old high colored greens. Got nice big green leaves. I mean, the green, that leaf, one of them leaves on that green was that big. And she said, she said, she said, listen to me, y'all. Hallelujah. No, they didn't want to talk about nothing about Jesus, but I felt the Spirit of God when she started talking. Let me tell you what Mama Who said. Mama Goo said, I get up early in the morning. Yes, yes. She says, before the sun gets up. And I water my greens. She says, I'm watering them. And as I'm watering them, she said, I'm looking at the leaves. I'm making sure no bugs mm. are eating up the greens. She says, and not only do I water the greens, the top, Watch this, don't miss this. But Mama Goose says, I 
I water the roots. Come on, say it, man. you. She said, I water the roots, Deacon Harold, because, she says, because eventually the sun going to come up. Yes. And when the sun comes up, watch this, I don't want my beautiful greens to be thirsty. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Somebody looked at that and said, oh, that's great. She watered the greens. Can I tell you what I saw in that? There are some things in our life yeah. that we can't wait till nighttime to deal with. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There are some things in our life that we got to get up before the sun get up. Come on, now. Come on in here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah, there are some things that we can't lay down too long on. Because yeah. somebody waiting about 10 o'clock to get up and water their greens. And the problem is the sun has already beat you. Y'all give me the night, please. I'm trying to help somebody. And if we're not careful, what will happen is we will allow things to creep inside and mess up our beautiful gardens. But I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Maybe it's just me. You ought to make up in your mind that there are some things I've got to protect. Yeah. Me and Mama Coop got a son. It just stopped me going at that point. Because I just wanted to see all I could about Mama Goo. Mama Goo's son came out. And he said something amazing, Nick and Harold. I know, I know you'll get this. Maybe the rest of them don't. Maybe you will. He said, good produce comes from good soil. Amen. 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 Yo, when I tell you them people preach to me so and they weren't even talking about Jesus, they were talking about their tomatoes and their beans and their collard greens. But all I heard God saying to me was, we so busy trying to protect the plant. Yeah. But what we better remember is the soil needs to be protected. Yeah. And what does that mean? That there's something on the inside of us that God has given us that we need to protect. The devil wants to destroy our mind, but we are to gird up our minds with the word of God. Water, not just the plant. Water the soil. Y'all get home, look up Mama Goo. Look up Mama Goo. Yeah. Mama Goo made some pigeon peas the other day with some rice. Yeah, she was talking about how she was sitting there peeping up pigeon peas. Then she fried some chicken. And let me tell you what she said. She said, she said, <laughs> I don't know where she got to find her. She said, if you just come on by and get a plate. <laughs> said, if you in the neighborhood, you might, you only want to church, just come on by on your way. I said, Mama Goo, I wish I knew where you was at. <laughs> it wasn't even a meat day, but that'd have been a meat day that day because I would have got some of that shit. <laughs> too often, what we do, too often, what we do, is we have allowed, hallelujah, everything to come inside and disrupt. Amen. Where are the watchers? Amen. Where are the watchers? Amen. Where are those? Who will say, not today. Not while I'm here. Where are those who will say that it costs me too much? I've been through too much. I've gone through too much. To allow the enemy to come in and disrupt my peace. Amen. Can I see what the old church is saying? You don't know what the Lord has done for me. Amen. You don't know. You weren't there. You don't know when. And you don't know where. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know the tears that I've cried. You don't know the hurt that I've gone through. You don't know the pain that I've experienced. You know some stuff, but there's some stuff you don't know. We got to get back to the point where we say, I'm going to protect what God has given me. Can y'all say that? Say, I'm going to protect. Come on, y'all ain't feel like you mean it. I'm going to protect what God has given me. Can I tell you what God has given me? He's given me a sound mind. Is there anybody who can testify he's given me a sound mind? And that's why I can't worry about all that stuff that don't make a difference because I need my mind. Let this mind be you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need the mind God 
God has given me. Yeah. Somebody said we ain't got but one life to live. The devil is alive. Maybe you ain't got but one, but I got two lives to live. Because when this life is over, I'm going to live again. Yeah. 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 Got to protect our mind. Can I tell us we need to protect? We need to protect our peace. Do you not know that the enemy does not understand how you can be at peace? <laughs> when everything around you is crazy, the enemy wants you to be crazy. Uh, Y'all, come on, come on, come on. Somebody call you in foolishness. Especially, yeah, come on, those of you got grown children, don't let your grown child call you. And they've been in something. And you know what to do? If you're not careful because you love your child, right? Listen, I got a young child. My daughter was at school the other day. I was somewhere else. And she called me. Well, let me back up. Her mother called me and said, Mila got punched or got hit at school. I said, okay. I'm ready for the rest of the story. And she said she told the teacher... And she went back, and the boy hit her again. Same age, Pastor K. Started getting mad. Ain't gonna lie. I said, well, what is his name? Said, I don't know. I shouldn't, I'm not gonna say what I'm about to say. I was what I was about to say. I have some accesses. Right? Yeah. So I was trying to use deductive reasoning to try to Figure out who he is, right? And if we're not careful, what we'll do, watch this, is we'll get caught up. Come on, y'all. Say it, man, to me. And stuff. Watch this. I didn't hear the rest of the story. All I heard was when Mila got hit. Now, normally my mind would have been, well, what did Mila do? Right? But it don't make a difference in my mind because this boy that hit my child. Y'all see what I'm saying? And what the enemy says is, watch this. You can, I was having a good day. The enemy will do all he can to disrupt your peace, to disrupt your joy, to disrupt your great day. And the enemy says, if I can't do it to you, I'll do it to whoever I've got to so I can get to you. Don't you know that the enemy knows what you love? Yeah. 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 Oh, we have to take our peace. Yeah, yeah. You know what I start saying? God... She's there. I mean, at that point, I was in Lee County. I can't do nothing about it. So God, watch this. I need you to do what only you can do. Amen. How many times have we stopped doing something? How many times have we left from things we were doing, or places we've been, to go to tens of things that have nothing to do with us? Let's bring it to the church. Let's bring it to the church. Can I help you understand something? The enemy understands and knows, believe what I'm going to say to you, where you're going. Amen. Amen. I didn't believe this. I didn't believe this. Because here's what I said. I said, God knows the plans he has for me, and the devil don't know. I believe. But, but I realized that that would be a, fa a, fa a fallacy. Because when the plan for your life was made, yeah. the enemy heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to help somebody real quick. Yeah. I'm, I'm really about to be done with Bible study tonight too, for real. Yeah. The enemy heard the plan. Now, you may not know the plan, yeah. but the enemy does. Yeah. The enemy knows that the people that know their God shall be mighty and shall do exploits. Yes. Yes. The enemy knows that if we ever get to a point where we really trust God, yes. the enemy knows if we ever get to a point where we really believe God, yes. then signs and wonders yes. will follow those yes. who trust God. Yes. The enemy says lives will be changed, that our sons and our daughters will walk in their wealthy places. But what's, guess what? The enemy says, I don't have to fight too hard because they don't even trust you, God. When we get to the point, we say, God, I trust you. 
listen to me, every area of this church is under attack. Every area of this church is under attack. The music ministry, the youth ministry, deacon ministry, come on, no, the preaching ministry, the Sunday school ministry, the Bible, y'all better hear me tonight, the Bible study ministry, the hospitality ministry, the usher ministry, come on, yo, the deaconess ministry, the senior mission, the WIA mission, the YWA mission, come on, yo, I go as far to say the cleaning ministry. Yeah. Under attack. Can I tell you what? Today, today I was just praying. It was raining, I was just praying. I, I said, Lord, can we be honest? Yes. I said, Lord, is it me? Because if it's me, then God move me. Listen to me. So that a whole congregation is not lost. Because your souls are more important to me than me being the pastor. Because watch this. The Lord could move me and send somebody else and we can all be saved. Y'all better hear me tonight. And then the Lord reminded me. He said, opposition and issues and trouble is the birthing place yeah, yeah, yeah. for God to do what he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So we can hear you know what I said. Come harder at the music ministry. Come harder at the hospitality of the ministry. Yeah, yeah. Come harder, but give us the mind yeah, yeah. in the middle of the hardship yeah. to not quit. Yeah. Give us the mind in the middle of what we're going through to not give up. Yeah. Give us the mind to say we're going to endure hardness as a good soldier. Yeah. Give us the mind to say, God, if you keep me, then I'll be kept. Lord, help me to hold out. My change comes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's discouraging. It can be discouraging. Yeah. It can be. It can be hard when you're at work and folk doing stupid stuff. Amen. Come on, say amen to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it can be hard. It can be hard when you try to go to work with your mind set on Jesus, and as soon as you get there, Lucifer and his friends are there waiting on you. <laughs> it can. Oh, I said, oh, smoothly. Yeah, it can be hard to be trying to do the right thing and there's all this opposition and all this pressure, but somebody ought to make up in their mind that regardless of how hard it gets, regardless of how difficult it is, I trust in the name of the Lord. And if God can't keep me, I can't be kept. Now, unto him. Y'all ready? Unto him that he is, what is he? He's hey. able. He's able. I tell you, he's able. He's able to keep you. Not just keep you, but keep you from falling. Yeah, yeah. See, see. The enemy says, if you fall, you ain't got no life in life. So if you fall, you know what? You can't get up. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I fall and then I can't get up. That was an animated commercial, wasn't it? <laughs> this old little lady, she didn't fail. She on the ground laying down. She lived by herself. She can't get to herself the phone. It wasn't no cell phone. She can't get to the house phone. She can't even get up to get to the phone. So, 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 so this company came out with this, this, this little thing you wear around your neck. Like a little necklace. It got a little button on it. And if you fall, you just press the button. 
And it will automatically connect and somebody will come see about you. The enemy says, I want you to fall and I want you to be without a life link. I want you to fall and I want you to stay there falling and can't get up. But God says through, through Jude, I'm able to keep you from falling. Now this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing. It don't take a rocket science to figure this out. Falling, falling, you can get up. But God is going to keep you from having to get up because he ain't going to let you fall. Come on, Sister Phyllis Nelson. Didn't Jesus say, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. Yeah, so now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Not only will he keep you from falling, but he will present you. Yeah. When they try to find fault, they won't find it. When they try to find something wrong, they won't find it. When they try to accuse you, the accusation won't stick. Because God is able to keep you and to present you. And not just before them, but before the presence of his glory Amen. with exceeding joy. Amen. I'm done when I tell you this. That's why the Bible tells us, think it not strange. Concern the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing is. What does that mean? That means when you're going through what you're going through, when you're going through your problems, it's not strange. It's proving ground. It's ground to prove that God is able. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to say this. I'm going to open up for questions. You ain't got to look at the clock. I'm done. <laughs> this morning, I was praying. And I was talking to God about something in particular. I got a text message. This message Bless my life. Message came from a man I worked with. He says, Good morning, Principal McCree. I have to ask you this question, and I hope you don't get mad. You're a pastor, you're a good father. I saw you do great things to people who didn't always do great things for you. You go out of your way to do things for others. So why do you think God would have you going through this situation? This is one of the things I struggle with the most in my faith. I started replying, Deacon Thomas. Then I started giving God glory. Yeah, yeah. Because until this morning, I didn't understand. But I understood when I got that message. Amen. Somebody is watching you. This is what I replied to him. So I love this question, and the timing of it is impeccable. God allows us to grow through things, not just for us, but for others. Someone is watching us. Someone doubts that God is able and is struggling with their faith. God knew that I could handle it. And so he is allowing others to see me suffer. Not because I did wrong, but because I did what's right. You mark my words. God is going to use this to one, prove to others he is good and faithful. Amen. Two, to bless me with better than before. Amen. And three, for God to get the glory. Amen. It's only a test. And everyone who has been blessed has first gone through. Going through is part of the journey to a blessing. He replied back and said to me, this is part y'all. I, I could have threw my part. He said, what must I do to be saved? God will allow you to go through some things to 
draw somebody else. Yeah.
Listen, anybody, anybody, question, comments, comments, questions, anybody, 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 yes, sir. I'm just thinking that when you said uh, in church a few months, a month ago, a month ago about emotions, being emotion and our emotions and not being emotions. Um, see, the devil knows that we could be, we have our flesh, so he knows we get our emotions. So that's where we have to have Stay in the Word of God, Absolutely. stay in prayer Absolutely. every day. Absolutely. Yes, because the one minute that we don't have the Word of God, and like you said, show all ago, we're in church, and then as soon as we leave the church, the devil's out there waiting for us. That's why we're going to stay on the prayer, stay on the Word. Speak, speak to that situation. Like I said, I speak that, you know what, me and my mom go through a terrible t- time. I speak the, the Word to that situation. It's not going to overcome me and my mom. Yeah. Now, and I prayed just, um, I was in the shower just before I came to church. I said, I prayed over me, I prayed over my mom, I prayed over my family, I prayed over my friends. I said, please, Lord, please use over all of us. Press on. The devil can't attack, can't get over, overwhelm us. You gotta pray. You gotta the blood of Jesus. The hymn writer says, I'm pressing on. Yes. The young way. New heights I'm gaining. Every day. Every day. Still praying as I'm almost bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. And it's higher. Amen. It's higher. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Tell me anybody else. Anybody else? Anybody? I want your faith to be. It just looks like sometimes you got to know the work of the enemy. You do. Because just as you were saying, sometimes you can get up and you're starting off on a good day. Mm hmm. Say, I ain't gonna let nothing get to me today. Mm-hmm. The minute the words or the thought leave your mind or your mouth, the enemy is gonna come. But you can understand when he comes, when you can rebuke him and he gone on by his business, but you can't entertain him. Can I, can, I, can I stop you a minute? That's good. Can I, can I stop you? Just let me tell you what I'm stopping. You know why we enter, you know why we have, some of us have to entertain the enemy? Because we don't know how to rebuke him. Yeah. I heard somebody say this once. Somebody said once, um, you can't tell me what I shouldn't be doing if you're doing it. Amen. So, so, so I, I got a problem with drugs, and I see you have a problem with drugs. I, I can't tell you to stop doing it. That's my issue too, right? Amen. Amen. Well, watch this right here. That's 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 where the enemy comes in. So the enemy comes in, and because some of us aren't strong enough, we, it's hard for us to rebuke yeah. that, because that which we're rebuking sometimes is us. So I can't, the devil can't cast out devils. He ain't going to do that. <laughs> so, 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 so the problem is, too many times what we do is, we, 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 um, we, 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 we plan panic with the enemy. And, and we give in to it. And we continue to entertain it. Because we don't have the wherewithal to be able to rebuke him. But we got to get to the point where we, so the job unbothered, and above it, so when it comes in, it, it sh- things should affect us the same way. Yeah, sure. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> yes. That's what we gotta get to that point. That's it. Right. That, that, when, when stuff come in, it, it shouldn't even, y'all. I think we give too much energy to it now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Like some stuff just really shouldn't be nope. that big to us. And we can only do that and gain that strength when we spend time with God. Yeah. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. My mind is being renewed. Yeah. And your mind should be being renewed. Nothing lasts forever. Amen. 
Include your troubles. Amen. 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 I'm going to cut you off. Thank you. Thank you. But we got to realize that trouble don't last all. Come on in here. He said we're going to have trials and tribulations. They're going to come. They're going to come. Mm -hmm. But it's not to destroy us. It's to make us strong. Make us strong. Each trial that we go through is a learning procedure. Yeah, absolutely. And what he does, he tells us that warning is going to come before destruction. Mm -hmm. We need to yield to the warning. Mm. That's where we mess up. We don't yield when he tells us. The danger. <laughs> the red flag is up, but we ain't even looking. <laughs> I'm colorblind. So, so we only we give him we give the devil more power than he really has. The only power he has is what we give him. Mm. Right? And we give him too much power mm. that he just overtakes. He tries to overtake us. But when you can say, I plead the blood of Jesus and be gone, I tell them all the time now that you sin. You know, they come, the enemy comes to tell you all kinds of stuff. But I told them, I said, you know, and it's not all the time the enemy. They get, you know, the stuff will come to you, and you got to have that yearning spirit to know what it is. Mm -hmm. Everything shine ain't gold. No. Because if it is, you put a piece on ain't gold and go out in that dampness. Before you get home, it'll be turning green. <laughs> so we just got to learn to, our thing is to trust God. And we have, and I tell them all the time, and I, I said, I have selective hearing. I'm just like the children. I hear what I want to hear. If that I don't want to hear, I don't hear it. So you can just take it on wherever it goes. That don't belong to me. You know, a lot of lots we take on, it ain't even our lot. We just grab hold to it because it come our way. Amen. But we, we got to learn to trust him the more. Amen. And every day I say, Lord, I trust you more than yesterday. Mm. I trust you more because I know that you all I got yeah. that I can trust in. Yeah. I can look around for my friends, my loved ones, and I can even say sometimes your family. And they know where to be found. But I know who I can call on yeah. that will come and see about me yeah. and give me what I need. Surely. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just, I, I, I'm, I'm at a place now that, you know, there was a time in my life that things bothered me. Things people said bothered me. <coughs> When I'm trying to do the best that I can and get kicked in the teeth all the time, but I'm at a place in my life now, my whole heart is to please him. If you are pleased, that's between you and your God. Mm. But who I'm going to work to please is God. Amen. Amen. If you keep getting kicked in the teeth, get your new mouth up. <laughs> Anybody else? They ain't even messing with <laughs> That's how much attention I'm paying to them. Anybody else? Come on, let's stand. Our God is such a good God that He implemented a plan of salvation so that our whole selves could be saved. What a mighty God who would say they messed up. They're doing wrong. And even after I give them my son, they still gonna do wrong. But I'm going to send my son anyways. I'm gonna send him through 40 and two generations. He's gonna take the longest trip that's ever been taken. Yeah. I'm gonna send him from the root and the offspring of David to be born of a virgin. I'm going to allow him to be born in a manger, grow up as a tender plant, and for 33 and a half years, I'm going to allow him to live among the people. And then at the end of his life, this one who has come to do what is best for them, I'm going to allow him to die a sinner's death. 
I'm not going to allow him to die of old age. I'm not going to allow him to die of natural causes. But I'm going to allow him to die of crucifixion. I'm going to allow him to be murdered. And not just murdered, but publicly murdered. I'm going to allow them to make sport of him. To ridicule him. To make a mockery of him. To strip his clothes off and make a male factor out of him. To give him a robe of purple. Put a cross on his back. And allow him to go to Golgotha. Bearing the cross. He's going to walk through all these people. And although he's done so much good, in that moment, they're not going to remember the good. Amen. In that moment, they're going to see him being ridiculed. Mm. They're going to see him being picked at. Yes. They're going to see him being talked about. Mm. And he is going to be committed and go all the way. Amen. Yeah. Although at any moment he could have stopped and called thousands of angels. To rescue him, he knew that no death, there will be no remission of sin. Amen. Thank God that he bore that cross for you and I. Went up the hill, called school, allowed them to nail him to the cross he carried. Listen, I didn't say hung, I said nailed. He allowed them to crucify him. Then when he died, they pierced him in his side. And blood and water came out for you and I. Then when he broke the legs of all the others that were on the cross, when they got to Jesus, and as he was getting ready to break his legs, he couldn't. He said, truly, this must be the Son of God. And then he was taken off the cross, Y'all know the story. They put him in a tomb. But thank God that the tomb could not contain him. Because the tomb, the grave, had to give him up. Jonah was spit out of the well. But Jesus got out of the, of the grave. Yeah. yeah. Thank God that on resurrection morning, the rock in the rock shook the rock, stood on the rock, <laughs> and declared that all power and both heaven and earth are in his hands. Aren't y'all glad he died? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad he died. Or more importantly, I'm glad he got up. Yeah. Yeah. If you're here tonight, you're not saved, you come right now. Maybe maybe you're online. Yeah, I had one on the phone today. Maybe you're online. And maybe you're not saved. I want to extend this invitation to you. You can come tonight and you can be saved. The Bible declares that you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. If you repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you're not saved, maybe you need to be recommitted. Maybe you're here without a church home. There's anybody who needs prayer. I want you to come in the portals of your heart. Come in your mind right now. Lord, we thank you tonight for these who are under the sound of my weak voice. We thank you, O oh God, for knowing that we must have right and righteous expectations. That our expectations should be unto you, the God who is able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless, able, O oh God, to hold us up on every living side. We pray, O oh God, tonight in the name of Jesus, that you allow the word to permeate our hearts. Help us, O oh God, to be like Mama Goo. Help us, O oh God, to protect those things that we care for, yes. to protect our salvation, to protect our minds, to protect our peace. I pray tonight, oh God, for Brother Caleb Williams. I pray, oh Lord, that you bless his heart, yes. that you bless his mind. Yes. And God, you will strengthen him right now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. I pray, oh God, that when the enemy speaks to him, that God, your voice will be louder than the yes. enemy's. Yes. And that God, he will remember, yes. oh God, what was put inside of him by his grandmother and grandfather. Yes. And he'll remember, oh God, what yes. was put inside of him by those who've gone before him. Yes. I pray, oh God, tonight in the name of Jesus for mercy. As only you can. Yes, God. Arrest his thoughts and his minds, oh God, tonight in the name of Jesus. I lift up Sister Bertha Walden to you tonight, oh God. Yes, I know that you are a healer yes. and that there is nothing too hard for you. Yes. Bless her and keep her tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
Sister Phyllis Nelson, I pray for her tonight, oh God. Yeah. Sister Corrine Walker Muzon, Sister Rose Wilder. Yeah. Oh God, Reverend James Moses Lee. Yeah. Touch him tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray, oh God, for the absent part of the church tonight and those, oh God, who don't know you in the part of their sins. Yeah. I pray, oh God, for every ministry in this church. Yes, and I pray, oh God, that you will get the glory. Yes, that after we've suffered a while, you will establish us, you will strengthen us, and you will settle us. We give you our natural. We ask you to put your super on top of our natural and call supernatural to be. Supernatural increase in finances. Supernatural increase in spiritual growth. Supernatural increase, oh God, in ministry attendance. Supernatural attendance, oh God, in everything that you do. Because God, we know that all that you do, you do well. And then finally, for those of us that are here tonight, Lord, if no one else comes, help us to be faithful. Help us to stay connected. Help us to do what God brings you glory and what honors you. Help us, oh God, to continue to suffer and endure hardness as a good soldier. For God, we know that we will reap if we faint not. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In the strong, mighty, and magnificent name. Sister Kilo Leverson, touch her tonight, God. Touch her tonight, God. Touch her tonight, God. Right now, God. We're right now, God. Wherever she is. Come on, y'all say, right now, God. Touch her, God. In the name of Jesus. Sister Louise Gray, touch her, God, in the name of Jesus. We know, oh God, that one day, praying days will be over. Singing days will be over. One day, oh God, our tongues are clean to go with our mouths. One day, God, we'll lay our swords down, never pick them up and study more anymore. Until that day, God, keep us, hold us, and bless us as only you can. And we'll be carefully mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the strong, mighty, and capable name of Jesus. And for Christ's sake, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 And amen. Listen, before we go, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to continue to lift up Sister Bertha Walden. I got messages. We were going tonight. Um, she was expected to have surgery, um, and they were unable to do that. And so um, we're praying that God will bless her. Hopefully, they'll be able to do it. And text said next week. So let's keep Sister Walden lifted in our prayers. As we get older, um, as we go um, through certain things, so things can be difficult, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And so more than more than just physical, I pray for her, her mind. Yeah. And so yeah. we pray that God will bless her and that God will keep her. Amen. Amen. I think that's all we have. Tracy Sister Tracy Flowers, keep her in your prayers. Um, her aunt transitioned this morning. She's been sick for some time, um, and we know that they prayed and asked God to heal, and this is how God healed. Mm-hmm. And so we're praying for their family. We're praying for her husband. I understand she has one daughter. So praying for her family as they go through their hour of bereavement. And um, it's a young lady who came to the wedding um, Saturday that I was in. She went to work 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. And her ex-boyfriend walked in and um, killed her. And she had little kids and stuff. So pray for her out of her family. I don't know if it's a hoax or not, uh, but y'all pray for that, that submarine. That, yes, that, that's, Lord. that's been on my mind. Yes, yes. And, now, I got some thoughts on that. I'd be more than happy to share those thoughts with you at the church. Um, but um, y'all, pray, y'all pray for them. Um, if I understand correctly, um, the, I know, that's what's um, The thing said that they need to be rescued by 5 o'clock in the morning because they're going to run out of oxygen. Yeah. And so y'all pray for them. Yeah. 12,000 feet under them. So y'all pray for them. That God will bless them. And uh, if it's real, that God will bring them back. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay, look at somebody. Say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you. May he cause his spirit to shine upon you. May he cause his spirit to shine And be gracious to you. May he lift up his smile upon you. And give you peace. Come on, declare it. Say, I believe. I believe. I believe. And I will receive. Everything. And I believe. God bless you.